means he's going a little bald. It means he's getting a little old, but it still looks great on him. And I really can have fun with the caricature. Doesn't mean I disrespect him, just means I really like the way his head looks. It's interesting and it's fun. So I'm going to have fun with his hair right there. Maybe bring that in. Just suck in the side a little bit to uh, emphasize the vertical element of his head. Maybe his ear I'll bring in a little bit. Still keep it as large as it is, but maybe tuck it back. Because that's not important to his likeness. It's Every element is important, but there's certain crucial parts of a person's face that really spell out whether it'll look like them. Bill Murray's ears do not spell out what looks like whether or not it's going to look like him. So I'm going to make sure I emphasize that. I do like his long neck. I'm going to have fun with that. I like... I like when the head isn't giant in a caricature relative to everything else. That's something that can be fun, and it's obviously part of history. People like drawing the big head, and it's not because it's a big head, little body for no reason. My my own theory is that the head was the emphasis, the focus, and the body is an afterthought. Therefore, you want it to be an afterthought in scale as well, not just in detail or mention. So quite often people try to take up most of their page with the head, which is what they they set out to do, is draw that head. And then they, uh, they draw a body in there because it's requested or because they feel like it completes it. But I definitely don't think that the big head little body has anything to do with def the definition of caricature. So here's my rough Bill Murray. Now I'm going to simplify this. I could go into tone at this point. I could go into shadow. I can go into defining colors, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to have fun with uh, just line and keep it simple. So, feel that looks like him enough. I'm going to drop this down, make it lighter, and I'm going to treat this like it's a new sketch. I want black lines for right now. And I'm going to pick a brush that might not be best for a brush tip. But it does work well because uh, from this distance, from this scale on the page, I can get a crisp line and it's fudging it. It's based on, based on soft edges, but it works well at this scale. So you can just imagine how it would look with the brush tip. But for now, I'm just going to stick to, uh, I'm going to stick to soft edges, kind of giving that illusion. Whoops. I've been painting the wrong layer. That happens. So I'll drop the flow a little bit so I can have some control over it. So what I'm going to do is just apply some lines and I'm going to scratch away at them much like you would with a pencil or a Prismacolor pencil. Like I see a lot of animators use that method and it creates line weight. But I'm going to start with just the basics of the line. I want flowing lines. I want things to be clean and look nice. So I'm going to connect a lot of lines. And I can go back and erase them. This is digital. That's the great part about it. So I can, you know, have this come off there, off his eye, and suck in. And I'm establishing that line. I'll clean it up. I'll work with it later. But I just like the flow of it right now. And that's my intention. So just have things flow together. I might not even connect lines, I'm just experimenting right now. Usually I do connect them, but you know what, there's no real need to. I'm having fun. This line is important in his face. So I'm going to indicate that, nice and light. And then I'm going to work on his chin. And I'm sort of correcting as I go, making decisions as I go. I'm using the pencil sketch that I have established as a guide, but it's not the end all to my to my uh, drawing. It's just where I'm at at the moment. It's what I've established that I know gets the job done, but I'm still making changes based on exaggeration, based on uh, just having a finished product that works well. Now I'm going to bring his nose a little higher, because his nose is kind of like a, he's a little bulldog face in some ways, and I really enjoy how it it's wide at the top of the bridge of his nose. And then back to narrow again. That's something that's very distinct. And I'm going to go ahead and indicate the top of his nose. This area, very big. 
His nose is a big part of his likeness as well. It's not like that with everyone. With Bill Murray it is. That's something you notice by looking at other photos of other people. If you ever have tr trouble pulling out what you should exaggerate about a person, just uh, just get a page like... Um, you may have noticed in Sports Illustrated, you'll see... If you have ever looked at that, if you have looked at Sports Illustrated, you'll see that there's um, young athletes featured in the beginning of the magazine. I remember this when I was a kid because I don't read it now, but I used to. And they have pictures of them. Now, they're people you don't know. So there's a lot of photos, and they're very small, and they're next to each other in a row on the page. So the people you don't know with a lot of photos uh, next to each other, you really notice what stands out about each person because you're not familiar with them. You don't have any kind of notion of what they should look like already or any kind of recognizability past that one photo. So if someone has crooked eyes, you've really noticed that. So the best thing to do is to take a photo of a celebrity, insert it in with a whole bunch of other uh, people, maybe a celebrity, maybe not. Usually it's better to stay away from celebrities because they're too recognizable or family members. Just different people you find random photos of. Grab them off the internet. Do a search on Google for Bob and you'll find so many faces. Do a search for Maria or Jessica and you'll find all these pictures of people that you don't know. And then take that and assemble them in a big lineup in, in a one file and save it. Once you save that file, put it away and leave a space open for whatever celebrity you're doing. You're going to be drawing or painting. Once you get that, you know, once you're ready to do it, tuck it away. Don't take a look at it until you're ready to start painting or drawing or sketching or whatever it is you're going to do to, to get the likeness of that person and the exaggeration. And this is purely an exaggeration choice that I'm talking about to make it keep it unique. I'm going to pull this line up a little bit. There we go. And then once you get there, look at it and then just do it quickly. Because you're going to notice something very unique about that person right away. It's going to stand out. And don't stare at their face. Just glance real quick. Glance away. Kind of glaze your eyes and or go out of focus and look all around the page. I love the filter on Bill Murray. That's that little dip right here in his lip. I love that. It's so unique and it goes out and then back in. And his mouth sits fairly high so it's not not too deep or long. It's just really fun. It's really unique and it's very uh, three-dimensional. The definition of his mouth starts after the filtrum, so it's over here. And I'm going to enhance those little curl of a smile just a little bit. Make him look pleasant. It's not something you have to do with a character, but I like his subtle smile in this. Very subtle. I'm going to leave out his mustache in this because that's something that I don't recognize Bill Murray for having, and I just don't want this piece to have a mustache. And you can see it's light enough that I can still see where the forms and the shadows are and where the lines are in his face. So it'll still look like Bill Murray. It just won't be mustached. Mustachio. So I'm going to move to this little gullet he's got here. I'll use this line and just make them flow together. I like flowing lines, continuous lines. Go down into this. His little old man neck. Sorry, Bill, if you ever see this. You're kind of an old man, but you're really awesome. I'll be an old man someday, hopefully, if I'm lucky. Nothing wrong with it. I tend to speak fairly frankly when I'm talking about people like, look at his giant nose and look at his ugly teeth. I don't, I'm not criticizing anyone. I'm not judging them. I'm not, I'm not making fun of them. I'm just talking about the elements of their face that are unique. Things about them at this moment that make them who they are visually. Because that's what I'm doing. I'm representing them visually. So I have to be fair. I have to be honest about it. Otherwise, I'm cheating myself, as an artist anyway. Now, his little crease above his nose is fairly thick. 